Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So we're gonna play with roses today. I'm gonna show you how I make my loose roses. We're gonna go into practice mode and then we'll go into our real picture. Just like this. The Patreons get the extended version with the little ditzy flowers, etc. But you guys can figure this out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, yeah, it's just really simple techniques that I make super loose roses. Like I told you, we're gonna have some practice ones that look like this. And then we'll get into something like this. And I give you a reference photo from rose, roses, like a bouquet of it for you for color reference and etc. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, like I said. And if you want to join Patreon, you can join and cancel any time. The link is in the description box below. And you get extra videos, add-ons, extended, weekly, exclusive, and a Facebook group. We have monthly giveaways and weekly challenges, etc. And the live stream in the top tier. So it's just a place people go and support my channel, which I truly, truly appreciate. So without further ado, let's get painting roses. All right, we're gonna go over a few supplies. For the final piece, um, I'm using, uh, this is Fabiano's 100% cotton cold press paper block. It's a block. Don't necessarily need a block, but this uh, bright white comes in a block. So I wanted a bright white paper. Um, this is, should be a link in my Amazon shop uh, in my description. Uh, to start off the practice, we're gonna just use some scrap. And I suggest using scrap of like Arsh or some good 100% cold press so you get used to painting on this paper. It's not gonna feel the same on different papers. I'll be playing with my Princeton 12 Neptune brush, maybe a flat wash brush, and then number of course, the Princeton 8 Long Round Velvet Touch Series brush. I picked these brushes because they're fairly inexpensive, so you can go through them pretty quickly. If you get to like more expensive, like a Skoda brushes, and you know, we wanna be really careful using this. I also give you a reference photo from uh, Unsplash of Roses, just to show you colors. Of course, the Xerox copy is not as pretty as the one in the, in the actual picture. So we'll just practice a little bit first before we get into uh, the full final piece. So I like the bigger brushes. Don't want to use nice big loose roses with a tiny little brush. I talk about this all the time. Those tiny brushes are terrible. Let's activate some pretty colors. So I've got um, cadmium rose here. Actually, I think it's, actually, I'm sorry, it's bright rose. <laughs> There's a color over here called pyroruben, which is a fantastic red. These two are going to make beautiful red colors. Um, combination, keeping Cairo red by itself or cadmium. I keep saying cadmium, sorry. Bright rose. There's no cadmium rose. Bright rose. That's this one right here. Uh, W370. I think this is maybe the two are the same. It could be magenta. It might be magenta. Quinacridone magenta, it looks like. Or an one of the roses, I don't know. You play around with some rose colors, some red. This is cadmium red light here. If you mix this red light with the rose, you get more of like a, oh, I don't know, like a medium rose color. Put a little yellow and you get some blush in there, which is really pretty. And I'll go back and forth adding that, that, that pretty blush color. You can test it out on your lovely paper. See, look at that blush tone, really pretty. Consistency here. So we talk about consistency all the time. And here's this, the value chart to figure it out. Butter, <laughs> cream, cream, milk, coffee, tea. And that's the value scale, right? And how it is, butter is right out of the tube, basically a little bit of water. And as you add water, the value scale goes down in watercolor. Um, and that is the values, that's how you get from dark to light. And acrylic or oil, you're adding white. You're not doing that here, you're adding water. So this consistency is tea. We want it thicker though. Because I want to show you a couple ways to make roses. So I'm going to get the paint, which is thicker, means more pigment right out of the tube. I use two paints. It's easy to mix the colors faster. It takes forever to activate, like, you know, pan. These are actually tubes that I've activated. But the still, the, the consistency of the paint, the pigment, is a lot easier to make a lot of paint than it is to the, those, those chalky pan paints. I just don't, I'm not a fan of them. Um, the closest to one I like was Karatek, the Japanese brand. So I'm going to cry and grab some more of this lovely rose, a little thicker. Okay, I'm going to tap it on my paper towel. So a couple of ways to make loose roses. Think of like, you know, uh, U's or upside down smiles and things like that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. So here's the paint on here. It's a little, it's not thick like butter, but close enough. You just make a little smile like here. 
<laughs> upside down frown. And then you kind of go in between this, see, and then go around this and here. I'm leaving white space. Then you're gonna clean off your brush, all that lovely paint, and he'll have just a little bit of water on your brush. And you kind of push on the edge. Now I've got a lot of water, but you're just pushing on the edge on the outside part to get that loose rose. And you can tap in the middle, tap back on a paper towel. See, and you got that really beautiful loose rose. This is one way to make a rose. When this dries, you can go back over it and add some more petals. You can go in, add a little bit of petals out here while it's still wet, leaving white around it. See, I'm leaving white. That's ways to make rose. Kind of simple. Okay. Um, and the thicker the paint, you know, the more intense. I have a lovely rose tutorial that's pretty popular on my YouTube channel here. Um, I'm kind of painted it and then I've gone back in and kind of mushed it a little bit, my little technique. But again, Here's this lovely blush color. And here's another way to make a rose. So you, again, those same technique, leaving that space. See? Now this is gonna look like one note color. I'm leaving that same space. And we don't want that one note. It's simple rose. I'm gonna go in and mush it with some water. See, I tapped and grabbed and cleaned up my brush. I'm just kind of like mushing this color after I left the space. And then it has a little more variety to the tone. It doesn't look just like this weird rose. See how I didn't kind of mush that? Of course you let that dry and you can go back in and add and add and add, right? And you can take not just one color. Roses have multiples of different color tones in them. so. I've got that rosy color that I had. I can kind of blend that in while it's still wet. See, I'm just tippy tapping it. Tippy tap. So now you see a variety of colors happening in here. I can add that out on the outside. Mm, this little kind of funky stripey. I can go in and take the red, add it into that lovely blush. blush. <laughs> um, it's still very damp. I'm gonna try and get this on one side. I kind of like to make the darker tones on like one side, left or right, as it dries. See, now it's so wet, it just keeps blending and blending and blending. You have to wait till it dries. We can try and play with this also this way. So you're putting the big wisp down, go into the little dashes in here. Just get used to doing little dashes like this. See, I can add the lighter tone. I grab my yellow, get that blushy kind of tone. Out here, removing the color a little bit. So it will dry faster, it won't be so wet. But I'm using a big brush. We use a small brush. See, I'm, this will dry, I'm leaving that white space. You don't leave that white space, it gets dark. This, Another way to do it, okay, is to make it, <laughs> which I have shown in my really popular one. So you do put in the light color first, completely. Leave a little white space. Almost like a big circle, a couple of little white spaces out here. And then we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna come back in and add some deeper values with the red, okay? So let, letting all this dry, remember we just did this dark color. I pushed out the blush here. And I'm going to come back after it's dry and add the layers. It's dry. You want to add the layers so it's, you know, it has some volume to it. It's not this one flat note. So this one I put down. I'll add another value scale. Remember the value scale? Maybe it's a little thicker color. Also, you can have the same color and just let it dry and go on top of it and the value scale is already darker. So here we go. Adding in more of those lines like I did before. See little short ones, a couple bigger ones on the outside because the outside petals will be more open. It's just a little bit darker, right? We keep building. This one too. We can get a little bit much more darker on this one. I'm gonna get a little more blush on this one. See, little short ones in the center. The same rounded kind of thing and bigger ones going outward. 
And notice how I have like little short ones kind of one side and bigger ones and way on the other side. So it looks kind of foreshortened in that way. Don't go fussing too much, right? And you can get a little bit darker still, maybe on the edges. Play with it a little bit. See that? Go back to the one we did in the beginning. I'm going to add more blush tone, which is the pink with the yellows. Practice on the scrap. You see how just I'm, doing, I'm kind of like dancing on the page. Now my rose has a tendency to have like looser out here and tighter here. As you see the little lines. That's how we do this. I haven't painted roses, it seems like forever because I've been too much in the Christmas phase. Okay, so then I add this little tapping, the dark color in here, playing around with this. This one already kind of somewhat dried, and I can go back in again with a deeper, darker color. Put a few under the petals in here. some big ones in the back. Just playing with that. So I've got some colors happening here. Maybe a little bit more blushy, orangey kind of things happening. I can put a little yellow in the center, almost right out, pick, right out of the tube. So there's some ways to play with your roses. Right? And then for the little stubby ones, which you know they haven't opened yet. Basically, it's just pushing down, connecting like this. If you want to have like another leaf kind of out petal of here, right? Something like that. And then we, of course, we make our greens. I think by now you've know how to make a greens. So you just yellow and Prussian blue, and just kind of like the little half rows. So for petals, um, excuse me, for leaves. Again, using this brush. I just kind of push down the compound stroke and pull back. And I lift up, it's like pull down and lift up. It's like this movement. So you get that dry brush from the paper. I really love the dry brush, see? Just adds that element. Practice on the cold press. Now if it's really watery, it's not gonna do this, but this paper really soaks it up, so even a good amount of watery kind of color and then you have that color and you would add a little more Prussian blue to get a little bit deeper, darker. You can put a little vein in here. We'll talk about this as we paint, but see, you get the gist of the flowers, right? And you can change things up like I show many times on some of my tutorials, by just grabbing some water and kind of mushing the color paint. And you get this really kind of erythral looking scenario. See? It's really soft and subtle. Now, when you're doing reds next to greens, which I talked about before, you kind of want to not touch them too much. You want to touch the reds first or the greens first, vice versa. Go in and add some yellow. You see that? Green. Some stems. And just by using this brush. Look at that. And this is just a scrap. So let's do something for real. Okay, so now they have a basis. Well, let's just do something on a nice piece of paper. This is a white, like I said, it's the Fabiano block. Um, so this is like the final one in <laughs> Make or Break. I gave you a reference photo. You don't have to follow this to T, but you have like, you know, composition to go by if you want to use it. I don't like how tight everything is. I'm going to play around with doing some roses wherever I want to do them here. So using that same techniques again, we start off like the flower here, maybe like here little lines right a thicker I'm using um, cadmium red light and the bright rose and now they're like really thick to combine maybe I have a little too many lines here but it's gonna be a bigger rose and I'll get a little thicker with some of these ones out here and then again I'll clean up my brush and just get some water and kind of push the color but you want to tap a little bit. Now you take the color from the brush and move it down here. 
just leaving some space. That's an open rose. You can make it a little bit like foreshortened where it's like on one side like this. So I'll use this blush color one. Uh, little lines like this and then bigger kind of on this side. Shorten on this side. You can put some a couple of little big petals right here. Now this one you wouldn't have to really mush it because it's already light. And then we can get some really bright rose one. Let's get that up here. I'm doing it in like threes. Let's do another small one here. Again, little short ones kind of here, and then she get a little bit bigger on this side. You know, there you go. And then I'll add, I'll add some more yellow on this. We have different color tones. Another one here. Kind of clean up my brush, grab that water, and kind of push out this paint. Now it's not a perfect rose, but it's pretty. And that's what I really care about more than anything. Right, that mushing with the brush. And we have this lovely pyro ribbon. I have some up here. So this is now starting to dry. I'm going to start moving up a little, maybe like up this way. So let's grab this colors and do like another one. This one's a bigger mushing, less little tight ones. Big, kind of curved, big. And then some smaller ones out here. You see that? And then I could mush that. So that's a really big one. Kind of like doing this weird zigzag composition. Sometimes it just didn't intend it to be that way, but I didn't want it all tight like this. So, and I'll start to play with putting some greens and see where I go. I do the flowers first, it's kind of my thing. Mixing all the colors. I'll put a little teeny looking half rose here. Just a little weep. <laughs> kind of sticking there. Gonna grab more orange. This is bright, brilliant orange. And some rose. So that blush color. Maybe something kind of going downward, so you would kind of like do like a mm, half circle, little lines. Maybe some petals are out here. I don't know, it kind of looks like a mush right now. So you figure like a half circle and adding a little ditzy lines like we did in the beginning. If it doesn't look good, I think I'm just going to turn it back into a big rose. I'm not happy with the way it came out. See? I fixed it. Almost looks like a peony. It could be a peony in here. Right? Now, at this point, I'll start to add my green. So I have Kevin Yellow Deep mixed with some Prussian Blue. Got that yellowish green. Add more Prussian Blue. It gets deeper. There's some red up in here. It's going to make it more of like a olive tone. Again, grab some more yellow. I'm not making a dirty mess out of my stuff. This is fairly thick. See how thick? It's barely moving. It's like butt almost. And I can do my nice little dry brushing. Normally you don't go dark too early, but this is flowers. This is where we break the rules. Going, whoosh. this is compound strokes. See how I just do that? Do, do. I have intention of mush mushing this a little bit so I get that beautiful abstract kind of loose floral. Adding some stems kind of going off. See that stem? Let's put another one up this way. Get like 
feel it. You know, you're just moving the paint around. I'm barely touching the paper too, by the way. Tapping in here. There's a little open space, which I like. I don't like to keep things so crowded. Add some more yellow. And we've got that lake green. Now I'm gonna add some water to it. It's gonna move more. I'm gonna put some greenery kind of coming off the page out this way, making your eye go that way. See, and kind of come back around. So I could push like this and also go like, let's extend it this way. We're having fun. By the way, I'm standing up. Try standing up on your paint. You get much looser this way. Just like we did. See? Adding that lovely green. Really fast. Whoop, doop. Everything should be pretty fast. Comes out much better that way. Okay. Now I'm going to let it dry and come back and do the level, net level. Add another layer of the roses and I'm done. It's dry, so you go back in with your color. Here's the bright rose, a little yellow. Oops, making a mess here. Get a little thicker. See, a little darker. Again, see how I'm just doing those really quick movements and leaving some space? So now it's much better. This rose was getting all dirty here. I'm gonna fix this bright rose. Maybe a little cabin red light. And again, see how I just did that quick? Ninja. <laughs> again, faster movements. You don't think too much, and it comes out really pretty. This one's just going to be bright red. Really intensely dark color. And then we can keep that light one really light and just add just a little bit of color just to get a little dimension. See, just kind of like on that side, and even then a little bit darker too. I'm just building. Do, do, do. And we have that yellowish orangey one. You don't have to put a lot of color everywhere, just a little bit. Just doing a little bit on that one side. And then I'm gonna water that down a little bit. I really want it loose, so I don't wanna get too mushy. And that's kind of it. Now I mushed it, and like the original one I showed you, you take your brush, and even while it's a little wet, you can kind of push the paint around a little bit. Remember I said, you push the paint around, just be careful with the green. You don't want it to, you don't want it to um, make a mess. So we'll make some green, we'll grab some greenery, we'll kind of mush the greens around a little bit. Not too much, just a tad. So that gives it that energy that we're looking for. I like to have a lot of energy in my painting. I don't want to be stale. So. A little energy happening here, a little bit here. Grab some water and just kind of like mush that color around. See how I'm kind of mushing this around, the green? You can add a different color, like a blue or a gray. Doesn't have to just be green. Um, Prussian blue, mixing with my green here. And oh, there's a lot of Prussian blue right there. Oops. So that little greens, and oh, look at that. Kind of pretty. Change it up. I do want to fill in this little space in here. See how I'm doing this? And then just to finish off the roses, you can add a lovely little deeper color in the center or some yellow. Oops, one of my beautiful rose. See what happens when you do the green with the red? It gets a little brown. I'll just clean it up a little bit. Not a big deal. Now I'm going to put a little energy into this. Mushing this a little bit. These little guys out here. 
Oh yeah, that's a blue color. Yeah, I'm getting real nuts. This is where you change the composition and you make it kind of fun. You didn't have to do this. It's just a personal preference of me. I wanted to just give it some energy. So I'm gonna grab Prince Neat Long Round. Like I said, you can grab some nice deep yellow and stick a little bit of yellow in the center area or add some deep browns. So I have burnt umber in here and you can kind of just throw that in there too. It's up to you if you wanna do deep color or just bright yellow, kind of like where the center would be. Really, it's really that simple. Or add some deeper red, you know, like that. It's up to you. Or well, don't even bother at all. <laughs> Playing around with that. So that's it. That's how I kind of go about doing really simple, loose roses. Don't want to make it too technical. And really, I haven't done roses in a while, so I'm a little tight. But uh, you get the gist. So you, then what happens when you just use a tiny brush? It makes these little tiny marks too many. So that's it. So if you have any questions on how you build super loose roses, leave a comment below. And like I said, if you're a Patreon member, I'm going to add some more extra flowers in here and you get the extended version. If you want to do, if you want to join Patreon, click the link below in the description box. I have extended and extra videos. I have weekly exclusive tutorials and live stream and all kinds of stuff on the Facebook page. So thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. Take care and have a happy holidays, new year, all that good stuff. I'm taking a break. Well, you know, I'll still have videos out there, but I'm taking a break. All right, take care and I'll speak to you soon. So that's it. And that's how I create these simple roses. Um, you know, don't have to make it too difficult. So like right now, I might say that this little part here is just sitting there dark, it makes no sense. I might go back in here with a couple of dark lines here for it to make sense, see? Or just really deep center. It's up to you. Um, sometimes it doesn't make sense when you do something like that. Sometimes it does. And there you go. So if you have any questions in the comment section, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. And if, like I said, if you're a Patreon member, you get the extended version. So stick around.